Knowing the players on the narcissistic stage, the game is set. Of course, center stage, the stage in the, in the narcissist, narcissist universe, universe is, is the, narcissist. the narcissist. But let's go on and talk about another heavy hitter, the scapegoat inside the solar system, the ecosystem, the structure. There's always these key players, uh, the spouse or significant partner, the mascot, the lost child, the surrogate parent who may come in and basically help parent the children. There's going to be a golden child, uh, maybe a couple lost children because the golden child and the narcissist suck up all of the, the, the ingredients and the nutrients in the system. So a couple children left, get left lost. But the scapegoat gets it worst of all. The term scapegoat actually comes from the Old Testament of the Christian Bible. There were two different goats used as offerings in the Old Testament. There was a sin offering, which was an innocent goat that would die for one year's worth of the nation of Israel's sin. There was also a scapegoat, which was an innocent goat that the high priest would lay his hands upon and would confess the nation's sins, it was then cast out of the camp, in other words, sent out into the wilderness. How fitting it is that the scapegoat in a, in a family undergoes ritual um, projection, which puts the sins of the narcissist and many of the other uh, inhabitants of the system Everything that anyone does gets heaped on the scapegoat. Also, an enormous amount of parental responsibilities may become heaped on the scapegoat. Anything that goes wrong, financial crises, um, uh, loss of loved ones, and, and a loss of uh, a job, okay, anything like that. At the times that things that are totally unrelated to this individual who's being scapegoated, at the times these things happen, it is the individual or the person upon whom the narcissist will dump their vile um, uh, spew of anger, rage, resentment, and contempt will go on the scapegoat. Now, the scapegoat is often and usually can be a child. But it, many times, it, it's the child who's the truth teller or the one who seems to be aware that something isn't right here. In order to keep them from gaining any validity in the family, um, they're the ones who get scapegoated. They're the ones who get demonized. They're the ones who get villainized. Uh, older siblings picking on, it could be a younger sibling who gets scapegoated. All the older kids and parents pick on the younger kid. Or it could be the parent and all the other kids who pick on the older child. And if the spouse uh, happens to stand up for or against this abusive behavior, the spouse may end up in the scapegoated position. And the child who is going, undergoing that may get pulled into the ecosystem and treated with higher favor. Knowing this role and the roles in a narcissistic chess match is very important. Often, what are the effects of being the scapegoated child? It, the effects of being the scapegoated child or even the adult are often a lifelong traumatic symptom of the symptoms of rejection, abandonment, and invalidation. They have been so convinced that they are the problem it often leads to a lifetime of low self-esteem, insecurity, insufficiency, and, and, and almost uh, you're constantly waiting for the shoe to drop for what's going to happen next. And whether you did it or did not do it, you're expecting to be, you, you live with an expectation of punishment. You live with an expectation of betrayal. The way this affects a child in adulthood is a deep sense of being betrayed. Uh, the way it affects siblings in the system is they often, um, not only the scapegoat is invalidated and abandoned and rejected, 
um, other children that are in the system have to uh, reject themselves and reject their sibling. They have to abandon another one of their siblings in order to participate in this game. They have to dehumanize another one of their own uh, flesh and blood relatives. So what it does is it not only gives the effects of rejection, abandonment, and invalidation, invalidation on the scapegoat, but also in the victimizers. The victimizers have no rea realization that they are actually dehumanizing not just their sibling, but themselves as well, because they have participated in being a perpetuator of abuse. But they are doing it because this is the normal to the narcissist, and the adult is actually the one who is allowing this and actually responsible for it. But it also causes a great gulf between siblings, great sense of, in the scapegoat that not only was my parent not there for me, and if the significant other of the narcissist did not stand up for them, you feel betrayed by them as well. You feel betrayed by your siblings because you think that someone should stand up and um, defend you. And then the way it works out in, in long-term adult relationships is this person ends up being the perpetual victim. They end up being the per perpetual doormat and punching bag in, in relationships. And they end up actually being attracted to people who do the very things to them that their family of origin had done to them. They, they get attracted to someone who actually puts them in the role of the abuse that they suffered in a family origin. It's called a familiar spirit. The Bible says, beware of familiar spirits. A lot of times it was not your victimizers today who set you up to be victimized, but it was, it was a dysfunctional pattern in the family of origin. Remember that Jesus Christ came that we might be healed by his stripes. Jesus Christ is the ultimate atoning sacrifice for the sins of all mankind. For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But we are freely forgiven and pardoned and cleansed through the blood of Jesus. He was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with grief. He was despised and we esteemed him not. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed, Isaiah 53. But the family scapegoat, or the, the organizational scapegoat, because these, these roles can also be put in place in churches and organizations where there's always a doormat and a punching bag. Any group of cultish type group that, uh, that chooses to willingly create people to blame, or an entire cult system that scapegoats something or some other organization or some group of people outside of themselves. See, even the heart of racism is a narcissistic ecosystem because all of the narcissists within the, this whatever race or whatever hate group it may be are all feeding this grand idolatrous idea of, for example, racial superiority. And the scapegoated individuals are all other races, or it doesn't have to be, it could be sexist, it could be a chauvinistic organization, where a group of narcissistic men make women the brunt of all their problems and the object of all their scorn and ridicule. It could be an economic elitist class, a narcissistic elitist class, where everyone who has less than is scapegoated and all their problems are are due to the scapegoats, scapegoated individuals and their problems are themselves and possibly not the system. Shaming and blaming people who've been born in poverty or, or um, and, and thinking it's because that's their lot in life. That's what God intends for them to do or be. So it, it, it exists in a family system, but it ex exists in all systems of superiority or classism or identity politics is a narcissistic, identity politics is a narcissistic um, social structure construct. There is healing in the name of Jesus Christ our Lord. Peace.
peace and love.